you know, some of these, it's like, again, like these are fun to collect. I think the first FIFA is a piece of art. Oh, yeah, wait, let me see this card. I love this card. Yeah. That's a, I would love to get this signed. Oh, Drew Bledsoe rookie. This, this was the card. So, oh, Jason Kidd rookie. Oh, Cal Berkeley. Like there's the coolest people on the floor. How come there, you haven't seen Spike Lee in the background of a card? I am ripping 90s wax, 90s NBA hoops, 90s pinnacle, 90s football. The junk wax era is back in 2023. I don't know if that's true, but I'm going to Bleaker training today and I'm gonna meet up with Mark, who's the owner of Bleaker, and we're gonna rip some junk wax and talk about it. If you guys are into junk wax, if you ever had experience with it, let me know in the comments. I also have to say, I never collected junk wax, never ripped it. I always just stacked it up and let it brick. I collected, I'm a modern collector. I am the Panini boy. I started collecting when Panini started making cards in 2009. I got the tail end of Upper Deck in 2011 Bowman with Bryce Harper. So Junk Wax, never collected during it, but I know a lot of people did. And I actually love hearing about it because it's very interesting. Do you want a free Junk Wax pack? I'm gonna pick up five to 10 of these Junk Wax packs to give out to my subscribers. All you have to do, so easy. Make sure you're subscribed, like this video and comment down below. What is your favorite junk wax pack and why? You could say, what's your favorite memory from ripping junk wax or give me some education on junk wax because I still don't understand exactly the process besides it being overproduced. I wanna know actual experiences. So with that, let's go rip some junk wax. As we're at Bleaker, got Jess, we got Mike, and we've got the man, the myth, the legend. <laughs> what are you, what are you opening this right now? This was Leaf, it wasn't that fun. What show we open though? All right, show me what you oh, got for, wait, wait, tell me about these 90s boxes. What do we have here? Yeah, Out of all, everything, all these. Everything that I like to open, nobody else does, but just me maybe. Top three products out of everything you have here, what oh, is it? And on. tell me why, grab Score each select, back. USA Basketball, these are fun. Yeah, let's see it. Awesome, we know they're not, do break but Get a cool lenticular in every pack. Sick. That's a lot of fun. You can't go wrong with Pro Set. Everyone's seen this though, it's not that special. Actually, where well, there's some hidden gems. Oh, this is sweet. Look at this, Jerry Rice is pretty. Wow. These are all upside How down. old were you when you first opened all this? What thing? year is this? Was it 90? 90, I was nine years old. These are a lot of fun. 90, 95 Ultra Football. You gotta crack them a little though, they're a little bricked. When you say bricked, what, what does that mean? Why does that happen? Uh, cards are just old, weren't stored properly get stuck together. A lot of times you can slide them right off. Sometimes what you'll see is, oh, uh, they don't, but these are cool. You get one gold one. card in every pack, and then usually you get an insert. So Tony Baselli, he was a top pick that year, but see how it's stuck? That's kind of bricked, but beautiful cards. Unfortunately, the rookies this year weren't just like the biggest deal. But again, now with 90s on the rise, like an Emmett Smith card. It's crazy because I didn't even know that you'd get one gold. Like, I think we were talking about trends in like the next 10 years, Prism, stuff like that. We'll remember like, oh, I got one insert per box or whatever right. it was. This, this looks is cool. cool. Warren Sapp rookie. Yeah. Darby. This is awesome. Moreno award winner. 90s inserts were just different. You never go wrong with the upper deck basketball. These are always fun. They pack these with way too many Jordans, which makes every box have a lot of potential value. And they're usually a lot less chance of being bricked. Some of the, the photos in these are incredible too, but even like the back of the cards, they go all out to make the photos cool. What's good is you can find this stuff. Oh, there we go, Alvin Robertson. What do you call this? Just a hologram. They don't make cards like that. It's uh, it's Carver thin. will give you, there's a good magic. And here you go, Magic and Mike. It's classic. Yeah. Those are probably in one of his last games. It's fun to actually look these guys up. Allen, stud it. But I bet when you look him up, they got tons. And that's the artist. Fun. Wow. Yeah. And then have fun and score select. This, this looks cool. Yeah. That's you. Oh, here we go. Montana on the Chiefs. Oh, that's sick. These, are, these were super expensive. Marino was an expensive card. This is great. Irvin, Bernie Kosar. Why was this such a Barry. big product? What was it about this during the night? What were people buzzing about? Just like the quality of the cards. I mean, if you look at it, just like the gold trim, um, you know, condition sensitive 
was different for us back then. It wasn't as much grading. Yeah, so you guys weren't even grading though. Like when no, you so you just had to like you know you you would you would guess what like a mint near mint meant to us. And you wouldn't eat, but you wouldn't submit it to grading. You'd just be like, okay, this this is actually like in that, better condition than that would be it. What would you say? You're like, oh, this is mint. Is that yeah? You still use the word mint and gem mint. You just didn't have numbers attached to it. Oh, but you bled so rookie. This this was the card. Whoa. Oh, see now when it's brick, see it brings some of that residue. But that would have been, I mean, this would have been a huge card, right? It's like a twenty-five, fifty-dollar card in like its heyday of like that. But like that was also kind of like expensive when it's like a three-dollar pack and like. You can get a twenty dollar card. Oh, Steve, wait, let me see this. Card. I love this card. Yeah, that's a. I would love to get this signed. That's sweet. Steve. He's slowed down, right? He's not on ESPN anymore. I don't think so. I love a good camera shot, like a headshot, photo shoot type thing. Yeah, action just, shots are good. Rick too. Meyer. He was a big deal back then. This guy. Yeah. Why? It's him and Bledsoe were the top picks. You had to compare a modern quarterback to Drew Bledsoe and Meyer before this season, like your Burrow or Herbert. Really? Yeah, Bledsoe was the man. Remember, the Patriots were going too deep in the playoffs, and then he got hurt, and then Brady took over. Wow. Yeah, like Bledsoe was the guy. Meyer was good in college, had great cards, but never translated. Jerome Bettis, rookie. That was a big card. Man, nothing too fun. I was hoping to pull one of the inserts. You're, in you're going to bring a lot of people back with the memories. Like, when I say the word junk wax, what do you, what do you think of when I say that? Uh, I think of everything we have here. <laughs> exactly everything we have here. Like... That's what's cr what what sucks for me is I truly enjoy opening this, and now it's worth money. Um, so it's become very expensive. You can't buy it um, graded for as cheap as you used to. You know, this is a fun set because you have oh, I this. Well, one. You have some decent rookies, but you never know if you get a handful of like the the funny cards. What would it be? The Jordan stolen jersey, yeah, the, the Menendez Jordan, brothers. What else? Is there yeah, another Jordan one? Jordan stolen jersey, Menendez brothers. And then there's also um, a Paula Abdul card in the same set. What? Yeah. It's, uh, a, it's a Phoenix Suns player. Did they ever interview anybody about the Menendez brothers card in like that situation? Not like, that I, not that I saw, but like, who do we talk to to talk about that? I, I, not that, not that I know of actually, but I'm, I'm curious actually, like, who found it? This is when they used to do all those team cards and they would sneak in Jordans on it. That was the move. Stacy King, the Horace Grant, Scotty Pippen. Is it the John Morant card? Has more infamy in it? Oh my gosh, yeah. With right? Because he's got two two murder situations in it. It's wild how that happens. Like, they sneak in with the cards. What I don't get, though, is... Ooh, we blab. I've never seen that before. <laughs> what I, oh, Drazen. Legend. What I don't get is, why aren't there more cards with base, like there's the coolest people on the floor. How come there, you haven't seen Spike Lee in the background of a card? How come, right, right? Like that would be a sick set to see if like you had great people in the background. You can go to shows now and buy a lot of this stuff pretty affordably. Now, PSA is not grading it in tens. None of this stuff is gonna get a PSA 10. Um, Why is that? Is it just because it's so I strict? think it's just, one, I think they're looking, I, I don't know actually why PSA is not giving it 10s. I, I shouldn't even speculate. However, I think that these cards are so condition sensitive. Uh, like, like, look at this Fleer Ultra Pack. One, this foil is extremely hard to open and not, you know, be something. Two, the cards have so much foil on already. So, oh, Jason Kidd, rookie. Oh, Cal Berkeley. I always heard about this guy. Yeah, They're just so condition sensitive to begin with, and then they don't stay in great condition in the packs all these years. Like, right? These are 30 plus years old. Look at these uh, wax. So, so, so good. good. Damn, Ant Man. What do you think of Ant Man? I think I'm I'm buying him because I think he's going to be good. Yeah? And you big yeah. buffs fan? Colorado? Should ever see Not Anders? really. I just, my, my dad went to a game, so I got the sweater. Oh, that's, that's cool. cool. So, yeah. And what do, you, what do you like about cards? What do you like about collecting cards? Um, it's just like, it's fun because like you meet a lot of new people and stuff and it's a good way to make money, especially as like a kid my age. Look at that, the hustle. And then you collect too? No. You're I'm, supporting? I'm just here because I know a lot about basketball so I can yeah. help. That's cool, man. Hey, look at that. The tag team right there. Yeah. <laughs> That's cool, man. What's your name? Ashton. Ashton, what's your name? George. George, nice to meet you guys, nice man. Did you do like 20 on this? Yeah, I can do 20 on that. Look at that. You just offered 20, got the deal, boom. So Mark, I see some cool stuff. Show me what's on the shelf. Want to just like grab each one and talk about it? So some of these. This is a music audio 
uh, grading company. This is a cassette. You're okay. probably too too young to know what a tape. You should be old enough to know what a tape cassette is. Um, but this is how we used to get music back in the 80s and 90s before CDs. Um, so these are sealed cassettes. Uh, hip hop, obviously, collectibles are through the roof right now. Uh, a lot of ones that I grew up on, I tried to find. DMX, rest in peace. Yeah, this is yeah the tribute oh, to Biggie nice. when he passed. Uh, but they grade them just like cards, one through ten. Uh, they grade the seal, and then they grade, um, you know, their the uh, the quality of the tape overall. They grade mm. um, if it's broken or not. So like, even like this Nelly tape, for example, has like a massive crack right there. Mm. Um, so it, you know, it gets it gets the grade it gets. All right, and then you got some of my favorite thing. I love video games. What do we got here? Yeah, so this is just, you know, I think video games, I'm not 100% bought in yet as a collectible, but you can find some, some sleepers in the auction. So to me, it was just the games that I recognized. Like the first FIFA I thought was pretty cool to this have. This is cool. This is heavy too. Yeah, Madden 95 I thought was a pretty cool um, game to me. I think there was a lot of innovation that year. Um, and you know, overall, I think Heritage does a really good job showing you the valuations and last kind of prices on each on each bid as you're going through. So they made it really easy for me to pick these up, and their and their live auctions are fun. I don't know if you've done Heritage live, but they're incredible. You know, some of these it's like again, like these are fun to collect. I think the first FIFA is a piece of art, as much as it is, uh, you know, something to. To, to buy, sell, trade. So trying out this Cargiano's Marketplace and I'm staying in uh, Jersey City this time. We have a big week this week. I'm doing a event at the New York Road Show. We're gonna film a shop tour. And anybody that's in New York, if you know any card shops, you know, I come through New York a decent amount, you know, let me know. Cause I definitely like filming these shop tours. I like taking you guys with me. Obviously we do sports cards, but at the same time we do life, food. I don't know if I could live here though. It's just a lot of hustle and grind. But when I come here, I feel so motivated. Um, you know, some of my favorite places we've gone to, obviously, we've gone to Bleecker Trading, hosted trade nights there. Shout out to Mark and Jacob. We'll come back out there. I know they're doing some stuff with their shop. And then I'm going to go to Kentucky Roadshow, the franchise, going to the New York Roadshow. Shout out to Kevin. So I got a number 16, which is a chicken parm sandwich. And then one with a Diet Coke, didn't have Coke Zero. Orzo arugula salad. 25 bucks. So amongst other things, I looked at living situations and apartments in New York are three to $4,000, which is insane. And even some of the like bigger places, like 6200 um, and then I would have to pay $25. I would definitely be eating top ramen if I lived here. What are some of your favorite experiences or spots when you've come to New York? Anthony and Sons, panini shop, 10 out of 10. That place was sick. Uh, AG and I went there and it was awesome. And now obviously, I'm staying in Jersey City. It was a little cheaper. I got an Airbnb, it just worked out. I'm trying to fly JD out here so he can film the New York, our New York thing, because I don't want to vlog it. I don't enjoy vlogging all the time. Like I'll vlog something like this, but I don't, I don't enjoy vlogging when we do like, events, shows, and trade nights. It's just too much for me, but for this, I can handle it. Look at that chicken parm. Nice layer to it. Thick piece of chicken, some mozzarella. Let's go. Not too much sauce, the cheese is good. Good flavor, so, not bad. Let's try, let's try our orzo salad. I'm, I'm a sucker for this. Everybody thinks I, uh, I swear I identify as uh, Italian after how much Italian people have eaten over the years. It's nice. Arugula, some asparagus in there. Not too much sauce. I I prefer like a, a salad like this with my sandwich over like a bag of chips or something like that. Nine out of 10, solid. October 17th. So we just finished up with Tampa Bay Area Card Show. That was a great one. And then the next one we have after that is CSA shows. So I figured I piggyback, I come to New York, spend some time here. We film, I created some opportunities. The good thing about what situation I'm in is I can live on the road and, and work however I need to work, um, which is great. So I can literally live and work from anywhere with this camera. I mean, obviously take you guys with me along the way as long as you guys are enjoying this process, but we'll go to CSA shows in DC. So D, uh, JD and I will fly to DC on Friday, Saturday, take a week off. And then we've got Dallas Card Show. And then we've got Toronto Sports Card Expo, which I'm pumped. I love going to Canada and I'll bring JD with me there. And then we've got like Thanksgiving time and kind of some low key time. So the next few shows, if you guys are trying to go to card shows, I would highly recommend if you're in Canada, come to Toronto. And if you can make it to Dallas, it's gonna be one of the bigger Dallas shows. In December, I feel like card shows kind of 
dip down and, and that that is true because everyone's in the holiday spirit and you know i think cards and memorabilia sales go up but it's more from at home so like the whatnots and the ebays and on and all these auctions will be popping hope you guys all enjoyed this video leave a like drop a comment tell me about the junk wax experience having an awesome time in new york we hung out at bleaker trading we're gonna go to the new york road show and just always love coming to New York. It's always a good vibe. So um, with that, I do want to remind you guys, check out Pristine Auctions. They've got their elite auctions. I haven't been bidding this week, but going to get back on that grind this week, and they're going to have some sick 10-minute auctions to check out. So we'll put that link down below. And as always, we're live on WhatNot once a week with auctions starting at $1. Check out our auctions. We're going to do a bunch of giveaways, and we have the WhatNot card show coming up in a few weeks. And we're going to auction some crazy stuff off and do some free freebies. If you guys need a Zion case, use my code MOJO10. Thank you guys for always supporting. And if you ever just want to show your support, just like and comment on the videos. Sh drop a subscription. That's all you need to do. Thanks for always supporting us in the hobby. Mojo Sports, out.